Hey guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting green to episode 6.5 of the Monogatari series off and Monster Season. I, I mean, okay, just looking, because, okay, here's the thing. I literally, when I was downloading this, I was like, do I need to watch this? Then I went on Crunchyroll, saw that it was also on Crunchyroll, and I was like, no, I think I need to watch this, because this might be, like important because something tells me this is about to be Shinobu. Like, dead ass. But yeah, <laughs> your girl's excited because dog, it's Shinobu. <sighs> if only Hanakawa. Only Hanakawa. We still, we got, we got potential. Second half, yes. But other than that, it's got to get started in three, two, one, go. Oh yeah, most definitely this is about her. Makes sense. Pretty girl. Some tell me I'm going to turn on her, of course. Uh oh. But you already know this isn't going to end well.
love the transition on how they did that. And they all died as well. The animals better not die. Jesus Christ! And she was the only one left alive. Oh, you can't get that dispel, baby. She died. And of course, they all perish too, right? Of course not.
That's so sad. Yep. That's so sad, though. Like, I, I mean, because she is, like, her character is the most interesting character. And it's like, you're, you, every, anytime you see Shinobu, you always wonder, like, yeah, what else do you know? Because when you a vampire, you've been alive for, like, the longest time. You're going to be alive even when the rest of these characters are alive, I mean, dead and gone. You're going to see everything. You're going to see the beginning of life, the middle of life, and the following tragic of a death. But the fact is, I was not expecting this for her. I feel so bad for her because she's on this journey alone. Yes, she has Aganagi. But still, she's on her own at the end of the day. Like, damn, you, she lost everybody. Her parents... Her kingdom, the following country's kingdoms, homegirl lost every little thing. And, and that sucks because she's so, she's so alone in the world. But she has this moment, like, especially movie-wise, if we're thinking, because it, it's been a long-ass time since I've watched the movies, and I kind of now want to rewatch them. Um, she has these moments where... You want these, okay, no, she's been clouded by, like, showing her emotions. She has shown them sometimes, not all the time, but because of the fact that she's very guarded and being like, okay, I gotta be on my own. I can't really ha form friendships, relationships, or anything with anybody because one minute they're alive, next minute they're dead. And so it just makes it even more interesting because, like, okay, it makes me wonder because I don't fucking remember this. Did we see or did they have a moment where they showed her finally turning into a vampire? If not, they need to kind of show that because I vaguely remember. This also now makes me want to just read the whole entire damn series and such. But I know it's a lot of books. But, I, I mean, I, I wouldn't be mad at that because I love fucking reading and stuff. And I love learning more about shit. Um, but she's just one of those tragic characters that when you look at her, you don't think she is tragic up until you learn more about her backstory. Because all I thought she was, I think before I had started watching like the three part, the three or two part movie, I was like, okay, she's just a vampire and such. And then you watch the movies and you learn more about her and you're like, damn, you really feel for this girl. Then you watch this. And you like, damn, I really feel bad for this girl. Like, she, 600 years ago, the most beautiful person in the kingdom. And you didn't want people to just look at your beauty. You wanted people to look at your soul. But the thing is, the moral of the story of this story is, is never trust someone. Which, any dealings with nothing, because there's always a price with that and I get it she wanted people to see her soul and such but because she you know said yes without knowing the consequences and then we all find out the consequences everybody over here dying one one by one and now she's alone and that the fact that she's like I can't move on I can't die and be with my family because her soul isn't allowing her to so her her punishment is not only watching people that, like, if she meets in a moment, die in front of her in these gruesome and torturous ways, because it had to be, because, damn, we saw we saw several people hanging. Jesus Christ. I mean, even the, the poet killed the animals! The animals! What the animals do? The animals, they do shit! But the thing is, uh, honestly, regardless, because even if the animals were still alive and if she just looked at them, they would have died too. So regardless, but still, that is fucked up. I was not expecting animals to die. Um, everyone in your lineage of a family 
if you lived in that kingdom, dead, with it, in a heartbeat! Oh my god. Poor baby. And she has all this, like, probably guilt and remorse. And so, I bet you in moments, like, anytime when, you know, we do see her, in the back of her mind, like, if she, okay, like, for example, last week, her having a um, conversation with, um, Sekoku, um, she's probably in the back of her mind thinking of so many things and such and being like, where could I have stopped? Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? I, if I had to stop this, it's going to happen. The, the big old what if thing that we all question about ourselves and stuff, if, you know, because once again, there's always pros and cons and something. But the biggest thing at the end of the day, it it's still, even though it sucks, it still is good for her because at the end of the day, she might agaraki. Like, that's the good thing. She's able to have a better life and kind of maybe not worry. Because there hasn't been a moment where she's, like, been morally deprived, scared, nervous, um, worried or anything, obviously, until her, like, movie-wise, I think. Um, but Agaragi treats her good. And, and I love that. And so, it, it, even though this girl be eating some goddamn donuts all the fucking time. But she has a better life than she did. And so I'm glad that she has found someone. I would say her person, even though I don't ship them, nigga. Well, no, there was a time I did, but really when she was just kiss shot, not how she is now, because I'm like, that's a child, because <laughs> that is a child, even though she's like up to eight years old, that's a child, and I can't look at her like that, so, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> but one thing I also do want to say about this little short episode, the quality of this it gave feels you know to so that one other show that this company did uh studio shifted uh the one fate series um for one of my personal sabers and such they like went be a uh, b uh, i can't speak <laughs> above and beyond with this 12 minute short i mean it gives you the information that yes you're wondering for like the longest time but just the i love how it felt like a pop-up book and such. I haven't seen, like, a good-ass pop-up book since I was a fucking kid. And, and I loved it. I think just if we ever had a whole 30-minute episode on that, or even 25, just more on Shinobu's story, I would love that because I think that's, like, the best way to really tell. Like, or how I feel with this one series that I'm currently watching, uh, the first episode of Nyan Nyan Bayori, where it's literally music, no speaking for like the first, I think, three to five minutes. To me, also, that's great storytelling because you can get so much in those couple of minutes without a person talking and such. So maybe, fingers crossed, they could do something like that in the future with the series and such. I'm not 100% sure. But no, this was really good. I might have to watch it again. Um, maybe later on tonight or before next week's episode for episode seven, because it's now, we're now clearly focusing on Shinobu, which once again, yes, because I love her to death and I love learning more about her dead ass, but it does make me wonder what else we're going to learn about in the remainder of these episodes for her, because I remember looking at the one other poster and I think it is both her because there's one where she's like, I think short haired and kind of long haired. I'm not really sure on that, but maybe... I feel like there's going to be, with this next episode, a lot of inner monologues for her and such. Having a lot of conversations with herself and with herself and thinking about her past. Maybe, possibly, potentially having Agaragi possibly speak. Because I feel like any moment that they're in together, they have, like, the best conversations. Not only those two, but, like, when it is also, like, Agaragi with any other girl because those like they feel very impactful and it's like you not only get to learn a lot of things but it's like damn once you do learn those like certain moments between those two you go out and you take those skills out to like other people i don't know that's just me but other than that guys that is my reaction towards episode 6.5 of the monogatari series off and monster season if you guys enjoyed it please give me a like it really helps me out also subscribe to my channel and make videos every single day join the master squad and of course i will see you guys officially all next next Saturday for episode seven. But until then, I will see you guys all next time. Bye.